Ah, the high seas, a place of vast horizons, salty breezes and petty squabbles over maritime borders. Recently, China and the Philippines decided to spice up their ongoing maritime disagreement with a dash of whoops. Did we just accidentally take your guns? Diplomacy. It all went down in the South China Sea, a body of water so hotly contested it makes a pot of instant ramen look downright peaceful. The Philippines, bless their souls, were just trying to deliver supplies to their troops stationed on a rusty old ship. Then, the Chinese Coast Guard allegedly swooped in like a seagull eyeing up a dropped ice cream cone, making off with some Philippine military equipment. Now, the Chinese government claims they were merely borrowing the equipment. But as anyone who's ever borrowed a pen and forgotten to return it knows, that's rarely the end of the story. This incident is a microcosm of the tangled web of international relations, where even a seemingly straightforward act of borrowing can quickly escalate into a full-blown diplomatic crisis. So buckle up, Buttercup, we're diving headfirst into the murky waters of international intrigue. Let's break this down. The Philippines, in a move that can only be described as optimistic, attempted to resupply their troops stationed aboard the BRP Sierra Madre. This isn't just any ship, it's a World War II, era relic intentionally grounded on a shoal in the South China Sea. Think of it as the maritime equivalent of leaving a sock on the floor to claim a bedroom. Naturally, China, which claims sovereignty over practically the entire South China Sea, wasn't too thrilled about this whole supply run business. Enter the Chinese Coast Guard stage left, looking about as subtle as a shark in a swimming pool. They intercepted the Philippine supply boats and, in the ensuing kerfuffle, allegedly relieved the Filipinos of some of their military equipment. Now China's version of events goes something like this. Oh, those guns? We just borrowed them. Needed to check something. We'll be sure to return them, eventually. The Philippines understandably aren't buying it. Because if history has taught us anything, it's that when a country borrows military equipment from another country, it rarely ends well. This incident, while seemingly small potatoes in the grand scheme of global conflicts, speaks volumes about the delicate dance of power dynamics at play in the region. It's a reminder that in international relations, perception is often reality. And right now, China's actions are sending a pretty clear message. We do what we want. Let's talk about the South China Sea. This isn't just some random patch of ocean, it's a strategically vital waterway, home to crucial shipping lanes and potentially trillions of dollars worth of oil and natural gas reserves. The problem is, everyone and their grandmother seem to have a claim to this watery treasure chest. China, in particular, has gone full-on cartographic conquistador, drawing up a nine-dash line that essentially claims sovereignty over about 90% of the South China Sea. The Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, Brunei and Taiwan all beg to differ, of course. The South China Sea has become a geopolitical pressure cooker, with everyone vying for control and no one willing to back down. The result? A constant game of maritime chicken, with warships buzzing each other and fishing boats getting tangled in nets of diplomatic disputes. China tries to paint a picture of itself as the benevolent guardian of the South China Sea, they claim their intentions are pure, their actions justified, they're just trying to maintain peace and stability they say, while simultaneously building artificial islands and deploying a flotilla of coast guard vessels. The truth is, China's actions in the South China Sea are all about one thing, power. They want to control the shipping lanes, the resources and the narrative. This latest incident with the Philippines is just another example of China flexing its maritime muscles. Now I know what you're thinking, John, is it possible just maybe that this whole gun borrowing incident was just a big misunderstanding? A clerical error perhaps? And to that I say, well, this is international diplomacy we're talking about so sure anything's possible. Maybe someone in the Chinese Coast Guard misplaced the paperwork. Maybe they thought they were confiscating water guns, maybe they just really needed a new set of binoculars and got a little carried away. Or maybe just maybe this was all part of a cunning plan. A way to test the waters, so to speak, and see how far China could push without triggering a major international incident, because in the wacky world of international relations, sometimes the most outlandish conspiracy theories turn out to be the most plausible. So, where does this all leave us? Well, pretty much right where we started on a planet hurtling through space, 
governed by nations that often behave like toddlers in a sandbox, fighting over toys and refusing to share. Diplomacy, it seems, is a fickle beast. One minute it's all handshakes and treaties, the next it's warships playing chicken and accusations of stolen military equipment. But hey, let's try to end on a positive note, shall we? Maybe, just maybe, this whole gun-borrowing incident will serve as a wake-up call. A reminder that in the 21st century, we can't just go around taking what we want and expecting everyone to be okay with it. We need to find a better way to communicate, to cooperate, to coexist. Just remember to hold on to your hats, folks, because it's about to get bumpy.